Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the ever-changing world of technology? Tech It Out can help make some sense of it all. Breaking down geek speak into street speak, technology columnist, author, and TV personality Mark Saltzman covers consumer technology each week for every listener. Mark tackles the latest news, reviews, and how-tos to help you understand what's hot, what's not, and why. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 215 of Tech It Out. Hope you're having a great day so far on this October weekend, wherever you're tuning into the show across the country. I hope you're doing great for this uh, start of the fall. And thank you for making this radio show a small part of your weekend. Or you may be listening to Tech It Out On Demand in podcast form, which is very cool. So thank you for that. Feel free to leave me a review, a star rating. You can forward it on to a friend, whatever. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I got to say, this weekend's Tech It Out will not disappoint. Let me tell you why. We're going to first hear from LG about its new wireless earbuds that use ultraviolet light, or UVC, to disinfect itself, to sanitize the earbuds when you put it back into the charging case. How cool is that? And of course, they sound great as well. Speaking of cool, we're going to learn how to easily back up your photos and videos from your iPhone for safekeeping onto a USB drive. Wait, what? Mark, you've lost your mind. You can't plug a USB drive into an iPhone, you say. Actually, you can with the SanDisk iExpand line of devices. We're going to learn about the Lux, L-U-X-E, this hour, which is awesome because it lets you back up your important files without having to pay for cloud storage. After that, we're going to learn about another kind of storage. It's an app called Stuff Storage and how it aims to revolutionize the storage space industry by pairing those that have commercial real estate that they're not using with those looking to save money on secured storage for all your stuff. Maybe you're between homes or what have you. So we're going to learn about stuff storage. And then finally, for all those students out there back to class last month and maybe struggling with math already, sound familiar? We're going to learn about PhotoMath, a super popular math app that's free and lets you use your camera to capture the problem on the page and then helps you solve it and teaches you all the steps along the way as well. All of this and more on a brand new Tech It Out, powered by Asus for those in search of Incredible, which I'll tell you more about shortly. But let's officially kick off the show with our first interview. We love our wireless audio for listening to music, podcasts, radio stations, audiobooks, and for taking calls too, hands-free, when paired with a nearby mobile phone. And so we're now going to learn what's new from LG and what students may love about it as well with Gilles Pereira. He's LG's home entertainment go-to market manager. Welcome to the show, Gilles. Good to chat with you again. Hey, Mark. Great to be here today. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we're going to learn about the LG Tone Free FP8 earbuds. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. The FP8 earbuds for 2021, it's a very premium product. And as you would expect from a product like this, very compact and looks great in the ear. All right. So these are wireless earbuds. So these are the ones that do not need to be tethered to a phone. You just pop them in your ear and please tell me they don't have that long white stick coming out of them. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. Subtle jab against a competing (laughs) product. Yeah. So let's cover the audio first and then we'll talk aesthetics and then a very unique feature when it comes to cleaning the devices, which is very timely. But let's hear about the premium quality sound. Yeah, so partnership that we've actually fostered over the last few years uh, with a company called Meridian. Yeah. Uh, they are a UK-based premium audio company. So we first started using them with our soundbar products, and then we slowly moved into products like the FP8. And that relationship is very important in creating a very high-end quality sound experience, really, whether you're listening to music or listening to a podcast. Obviously, that that's very important. So whether we're deciding on materials to use in the product or equalizer settings, uh, that's a very important relationship for us and and that that shows very clearly in the product. All right, so it's called the LG Tone Free Earbuds, the new 2021 model, the FP8. So it has things like active noise cancellation as well to block out ambient noise around you? Yes, correct. And that, as you you could probably attest, has become almost a a must-have feature in this type of product. Regardless if you are, you know, a student going back to class or someone working from home with, you know, maybe the kids are still at home or or you have a partner who's also working from home, that becomes a very important feature that we've seen. Very important, especially during the, the COVID situation with more people working from home than ever before. Also super important is the audio quality when you're talking to somebody as well. It it irks me when they're wearing wireless earbuds and I can't hear them. What's the microphone system like? 
So one of the things that I absolutely love about working for LG is that we never kind of rest on our laurels. So if we launch a product, uh, we'll always kind of go back and look at some market research and understand like what is a feature that worked great? What could we, what could we work on? And uh, this year we actually added a third microphone. Uh, so now you're up to three microphones on this specific FP8 product. Uh, and that will basically just add an additional call quality feature. So especially to the point I just made about working from home for Teams or Zoom or whatever you're using for a video conferencing solution as well. Yeah, good point. Because they're Bluetooth, you don't only have to connect them to a phone. You can connect them to a laptop or a desktop that has Bluetooth. Even a, a smart TV that has Bluetooth, you can wirelessly pair these as well, no? Yes, and there's a pretty cool quick connect feature. So depending on the product that you're using to connect them to, um, it'll detect the tone immediately and it has like a quick connect. Okay, cool. And before we move on and talk about this unique feature that's tied to the charging case, talk to us a bit about voice control. I like when you've got these earbuds in, you can use your voice to control it all. Yeah, so much like you would have on a, you know, hands-free control on a TV, like on our G1 series, as an example, you would be able to achieve certain commands just using your voice without physically uh, touching the, the Tone product itself. Um, and you can actually customize how that works on the Tone app that is free on both Apple and Android Play Store. Mm -hmm. If you want to physically touch, if you're that type of person, you can you can customize what one touch, two touch, three touch, et cetera would do, or you can customize the, the voice control part of it, whether it's muting or changing the song or, or anything in that uh, arena. Awesome. Without further ado, Jill, I want to hear about this UV Nano charging case that, from what I understand, harnesses the power of ultraviolet light, UVC light, to almost clean the speaker mesh. Is that right? Yeah, it's a feature we've actually had for a couple of years now. It goes back, I think, to 2019. But it's funny that, you know, like everything, time is so important. So hygiene has been a lot more top of mind for customers out there, regardless of what product you're buying. Even just the shopping experience in and of itself, you know, everyone's just super cautious about if they're touching, if they're not touching. Basically, a 10-minute charge will kill 99.9% .9 of certain types of bacteria that, that will likely end up on the speaker mesh itself. So that little kind of like steel internal yeah. um, mesh. And yeah, so it's, it's definitely a, offers a little bit more peace of mind for more common bacteria that might uh, potentially cause you harm. And we feel it's a very unique feature, very timely, obviously, given the current situation. Yeah, no doubt. So again, it's called UV Nano, and that's built into the case that also charges up the Tones headset. And we'll talk about battery life in a couple of moments from now. But we are chatting with Gilles Pereira. He's LG's home entertainment go-to market manager, learning about the 2021 tone-free FP8 earbuds from LG. Because this is radio, Gilles, talk to us about what the LG tone-free earbuds look like. Yeah, for sure. I think the design is something that we've also seen evolve over the last couple of versions or iterations of our tone-free products. I had the privilege of speaking to one of the design engineers in Korea a couple of years ago, and it was just a painstaking process for them to balance between pure aesthetics and function, right? You always want to make sure that it looks nice sitting in the ear, but at the same time, you want to make sure the fit and finish is achieving what it, what it needs to, and that is basically sitting in your ear doesn't feel like it's going to fall out regardless of the activity if you're going for a run if you're working out or if you're just lying down on the couch listening to a podcast right so we've evolved that product this year where we worked with a biometric company that basically sampled like hundreds of different cross sections of ears so ear canals like wide narrow shallow deep the whole thing and this new conca shaped design essentially will form better in a wider array of ears. Um, so the fit and finish uh, definitely got much improved versus previous iterations of this product. What would you say makes these tone-free earbuds ideal for students? So whether it's the active noise cancellation, right? You wanna be studying if you're, whether you're a, a coffee shop studier or a library studier, the active noise cancellation is gonna help you concentrate on what you're doing and less likely to be distracted. There's an interesting feature called ambient sound mode. So if you do, you know, come across maybe a part of the chapter that you want to cross check with a fellow student quickly activate ambient sound by touching the the bud and basically that completely suppresses what you're listening to 
you can still hear it, but now the uh, people around you become much easier to hear. So you can have almost like a quick conversation and then get back to what you're doing quickly instead of like pulling out the earbud or turn or going opening your phone and pressing pause and whatnot, right? Yeah, I like that. It's like a chat mode. Yeah, exactly. Chat mode. And even more specifically to a chat mode, you, you have the ability to pull out one of the earbuds and whisper. Before we wrap up and talk price, Jill, how's the battery life? on these things. The smaller the devices get, the more concern I have over battery life. Being a consumer of this type of product myself, I'm on the go quite a bit on a bike ride or I'm playing volleyball or whatever at the gym, listening to podcasts, you will definitely want to make sure the battery life is sufficient to last a whole day. You know, a typical day of a student, you're you know running from class to class. So we, we offer 24 hours of total play time in a single charge. So that's going to get you 10 hours out of the earbuds themselves. And then in a additional 14 from the charging case. So, you know, you combine that, you get 24 hours, but you can actually get an hour of playing time from just a quick five minute charge. So that quick charge will definitely get you on your way, even if you did forget to charge them overnight. Impressive. All right, so how much do these LG tone-free earbuds, the FP8 or 2021 model, how much do they cost? And what's the best website to learn more? So pricing will start at $199.99. And to find out more about this product, you can visit LG.com. All right. Jill, always great to chat with you. Thanks for your time. And I look forward to doing this again soon. All the best. Good, Omar. Thanks for having me again. Great to talk to you. When we return on Tech It Out, how to put a USB stick in your iPhone, back up your photos and videos, SanDisk will explain how it's done when we return. Stay with us. Listen to Check It Out whenever you want. Find the Check It Out podcast at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Tech It Out. This show is powered by ASUS for those in search of incredible. ASUS creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life. And that includes its line of award-winning laptops and desktops. There's monitors, smartphones, smart watches, tablets, and much more. For those in search of incredible, visit asus.com slash us slash radio for more info. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. The one thing I always hear from iPhone and iPad users is that it's not easy to get their photos and videos off their Apple device for safekeeping. There's no expandable storage with an iPhone or iPad, but there is a super simple solution available and one that does not require a cloud service or monthly subscription or anything like that. It's called the iExpand Flash Drive Lux, and it's really smart. Joining us on the line to explain what it is and how it works is Jacqueline Tsang, Product Marketing Manager for SanDisk, a Western digital brand. Welcome to the show, Jacqueline. Good to chat with you. Hi, thank you for having me. I love this iExpand family that addresses a problem. And this is what we're going to chat about today. And and with that in mind, I always say the best tech does solve a problem. So tell us about the iExpand Flash Drive Lux and what it does. Yeah, sure. So the iExpand Flash Drive Lux is a flash drive that has two different connectors. And essentially what this allows you to do is utilize this drive for not only your iPhone, but all other USB type C devices as well, such as your iPad Pro or your MacBook, um, and even connect to some of your friends who may have an Android that has USB type C. And so this really allows you to move files across different platforms very easily and especially larger files can be done you know with this mobile on the go flash drive right so it looks like a regular small flash drive depending on what you call it some people call it a jump drive or a thumbstick we all know what we're talking about it's about the size of your pinky finger even smaller but as you said Jacqueline on one side is a lightning connector which snaps into iPhones and some some of the iPads out there and on the other end is USB-C which is a connector that will plug into an iPad Air or a MacBook or a, a, almost all of the Windows PCs and laptops I've seen over the last few years have also USB-C as well as Android smartphones and tablets so it's a very versatile device and we'll get to you know how many files you can store on this in a in a few moments from now but it's all built inside of this one durable little drive so walk us through how it works I think the first thing you do and I, I really like this part is that you first plug it into your device and you're immediately prompted to download the SanDisk app is that right yeah you plug in the drive and at least on the iPhone side it has no native like files app 
And so when you plug it in, it'll prompt you to download our iExpand Drive app. And from there, you can choose what files you want to transfer to the drive. And you can also set up automatic backup for your photos, videos, and more. And that's especially great because sometimes it's a hassle to think about when we should be backing up our content with sometimes it, you know, it used to take a lot of wires in terms of connecting your phone to your computer. And so this is great because it's on the go. You don't necessarily need Wi-Fi um, and you keep the drive around. It has a key ring hole so you can keep it attached to your keychains and that that helps with when you're on the go and solves the issue of freeing up space on your phone so that you can capture those memories when you're out and about. Yeah, because it could be extremely frustrating if you lost your smartphone. That's frustrating enough. But if you think about all the photos and videos that you might have captured on your smartphone or tablet without backing them up, then you know that's that's that could be devastating. So now you're able to make a duplicate or if you choose, you can take it off the iPhone altogether to free up storage in order to download more apps or shoot more photos and videos. That's entirely up to you, as you mentioned. It's all done through the app. And not only can you plug one end into the lightning port of, say, an iPhone or iPad, as we mentioned, and the other end, the USB-C port into a computer, but if you have an Android phone, I know there are so many listeners out there that have a Samsung or a Pixel or another Android phone, you can plug that USB-C into that smartphone as well to back up your photos and videos, correct? Yep, you totally can. And that's one of the features that I really enjoy especially when I'm taking a lot of photos with my iPhone and they come out great, they're good quality, but there's a lot. And then to text all of it or email all of it or put it in, you know, a cloud subscription service for my friend who has an Android, that would take a while. And so with the drive, it's super easy to just um, plug it in with the lightning port on my phone and then take it out, plug it into my friend's Android phone and transfer those files easily. Yeah, great point. I like cloud storage too. Don't get me wrong. It's convenient to be able to upload something over the internet. And then with a friend who may not be with you uh, physically, they can also access it, for example. But there are limitations, including, you know, with Apple iCloud, you know, you only get what five gigabytes of storage for free. After that, you've got to pay every month. And that's a recurring subscription that if you stop paying, you don't, don't have access to your files. I like that this is an offline solution that does not require internet. And you can store a lot more than five gigs. We'll get to storage in a moment. We're chatting with Jacqueline Tsang, Product Marketing Manager for SanDisk. We're learning about the iExpand Flash Drive Lux. What are the different storage configurations available and how much do the prices start at? The iExpand Flash Drive Lux is available in 64 gigabyte, 128 and 256, 44.99, 59.99 and 89.99 US dollars respectively. Okay, so anywhere between 49 and 89. All right, Jacqueline, and where could we learn more about the iExpand drive? You can learn more about this drive at sandisk.com. Jacqueline Sang, great to chat with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, we're gonna learn about a different kind of storage. When we return, the app is called Stuff Storage. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Wanna follow Mark? Google him. Mark with a C and Saltzman with a Z. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. This is Tech It Out. Tech It Out. With technology columnist, author, and TV personality, Mark Saltzman. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Tech It Out on the Radio American Network. Perhaps it's the least techy industry you can think of, self-storage. You know, when you need to rent some space to hold all your physical stuff. But it's finally getting a much-needed tech treatment. And to learn what that means exactly, we're going to now hear about stuff. That's S-T-U-F, one F, with CEO and co-founder, Catherine Lau. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Great to chat with you. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. So I'm really intrigued as to how stuff works. So at a high level, what is stuff all about? Sure. Stuff is a next-generation self-storage startup, and our mission is to be the home away from home for people's stuff. And this really started because we realized self-storage stinks, and it was from our own experiences that we learned okay, wow, most of these self-storage facilities are out of the way, inconvenient, perhaps 20, 30 minutes driving. Uh, They're often 
a little unwelcoming or perhaps not the most inviting spaces. <laughs> and there's a lot of hidden fees and be quite expensive as a product. And so what we've done is partnered with real estate owners, commercial real estate owners who own office, retail, apartment buildings, and we've monetized their underutilized basements, garages, and, and other storage areas. And we've turned those forgotten spaces into high quality tech enabled storage. And the goal here is to provide consumers with stores that's close to home, that's safe, convenient, and clean. So we're really excited to, to be launching locations nationally. All right. So that sort of answers why you came up with stuff. And I want to hear more about your own personal experience in a moment, but it addresses a few pain points that you found. It could be far away. The self-storage place may not be the most welcoming, it could be expensive. So with stuff, which is a platform and I, and I believe it's an app as well, which we'll get to, it connects those who have space to rent for your stuff with those looking to have a better experience for self-storage. Is that fair? Yeah. So we actually go one layer deeper in that we secure the, uh, the spaces that we have on our website for booking. And we make sure that they're set up properly, that they meet our standards, um, that we've integrated technology into the experience so that our customers can have a consistent streamlined experience. So um, not, not any space can be available. Mm -hmm. So you've got a checklist of things that that commercial space, as you said, as an example, that they have to meet in order to become stuff certified, if you will. And we have a whole uh, construction design team that's ready to turn all these spaces, a lot of forgotten spaces all around us uh, into stuff storage. Got it. So it sounds like a win-win. It's a benefit to the people looking for self-storage solutions, as well as those who have excess space that they can then monetize. Otherwise, it's just sitting empty. That's right. And as most people know, during the pandemic, commercial real estate really suffered. Uh, you know, people weren't going to the office, perhaps they were uh, moving to the suburbs. And so we found a lot of interest from commercial landlords who were saying, okay, well, we need to think of new creative ways to monetize our real estate. And the spaces we typically look at, basements, garages, storage areas, these are spaces that landlords historically haven't been monetizing. Mm -hmm. um, they've mostly been focused on the office or the retail upstairs. And it's been really well received from the real estate community. Though. That's great. And talk to us a bit more about your own experience and how that became sort of the epiphany to create stuff. I've spent most of my career in commercial real estate. So I've been through many buildings uh, over the years and something I paid attention to was these forgotten spaces. And during the pandemic, I was stuck at home, right? So I, I um, did a spring cleaning and I remember feeling really good after cleaning out my closet, but just staring at this pile of crap on the floor thinking, oh my God, what do I do with this stuff? So that's when I started looking into self-storage and there were very few options that felt right for me that were in the right price range, close enough. And so I put the two ideas together. Why don't we take these forgotten spaces that are right around the corner and turn them into high quality storage options. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, cause I haven't used self storage myself, but so I can see an advantage to a, a self storage facility that when you want to add some things to your shed, if you will, or your, your locker or remove something from it that you can go when it's convenient, think you get like a key or what have you, but how would it work then when someone else owns that space, like a commercial real estate property? So we have agreements with all of our landlord partners. We ensure access and security. Every single customer is onboarded so that they know what to expect, where to park, how to get into spaces. And what's really interesting about us is that we operate our locations 100% remote and therefore need to use technology and our building out a platform to not only be able to operate, but monitor the spaces. It's an agreement not only with landlords, but facilitated by technology. Got it. We are chatting with Catherine Lau. She is co-founder and CEO of Stuff. That's Stuff with one F. It's a modern take on self-storage by connecting those who are looking to hold their stuff somewhere with those who have some space to rent. What markets is Stuff currently in and what are your expansion plans? We're currently operating in five markets. So New York, LA, San Francisco, Oakland, and DC. And the next couple of markets will be likely Boston, Chicago. So excited to go there. And how much does it start at? I know you said one of the benefits to stuff is that it might be less expensive than traditional self-storage solutions. So probably based on size and a few other variables, but approximately how much would it cost, say, per month or per year to hold your stuff? So it'll depend on if you have a small, medium, or large unit. So uh, we have storage units ranging from $80 um, all the way up to $300. So 
uh, on the smaller end, you'll fit, you know, an extra closet worth of stuff. And on the larger end, maybe a, a one bedroom, two bedroom situation. So it really depends. We love that we're all inclusive because our competitors and, and other operators in the space tend to have a lot of hidden fees. So we pride ourselves in mm-hmm. transparency. And is that fee per month or per year? That's per month. Okay. And before we wrap up, Catherine, I'd love to pick your brain for a moment about advice you have for other young entrepreneurs looking to start a career in tech. I found everyone so supportive throughout the journey, investors, advisors, friends, family, and in that process got so much advice, oftentimes very conflicting. And so what I would say is absorb all the advice, but really stay true to yourself, trust your guts. And you'll be the one who knows what's right for your business. That's a great piece of advice, Catherine. Thank you. So I know the website is stuffstorage.com, S-T-U-F storage.com. But I hinted earlier, is there an app or is it solely a website? Absolutely. So stuffstorage.com with one F, of course. And you can also go to the Apple uh, iOS store, download our app, uh, just search stuff storage and you'll see our beautiful blue logo pop up. All right. Is it available for Android as well? We're soon launching, but right now Android users can use the web application Mm -hmm. to start. Okay. Got it. So stuffstorage.com, stuff with one F. We've been chatting with Catherine Lau, co-founder and CEO. Great to chat with you, Catherine. Best of luck with the expansion plans. Very exciting. Thank you for carving out some time to chat with us today. Thank you, Mark. Name the hardest subject in school that you ever took. Math, right? Well, after this short break, we're going to chat with PhotoMath, a free app to help today's students. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Breaking down geek speak into street speak. Check it out. Hosted by Mark Saltzman. Welcome back to Tech It Out, powered by Asus, a company that creates technology for today and tomorrow's smart life. And that includes its line of award-winning laptops, like its VivoBook family, ZenBooks, ExpertBooks, Chromebooks, and even ROG, or Republic of Gamers branded laptops for those who need bleeding edge performance. Learn about all of them at asus.com slash us slash radio. That's asus.com forward slash us forward slash radio. Let's face it, math is hard. I know that used to be the case when I was a student back in the day. And based on my three kids and how they struggle with math today, I suspect not much has changed. And so I was eager to learn about photo math. This is an app designed to help students with this often challenging subject. And so joining us on the line to chat is Jennifer Lee, Chief Growth Officer at Photo Math. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Good to chat with you. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So why don't we dive right in? At a high level, what is PhotoMath all about? Yeah, we are the number one math learning app globally. And we were started by a dad by the name of Damir Sabol. And Damir was struggling to help his 14-year-old son at the time understand and explain certain algebra concepts. And so that was kind of the genesis of PhotoMath. Um, Today, We have over 250 million downloads of the app and we're in 30 30 different languages, including French for our French Canadian listeners out there. And what the app does is we use the mobile camera to understand what a student is trying to learn and then use a bunch of powerful AI, computer vision, machine learning and software to then understand that and provide really rigorous step-by-step explanations to help students understand the how and the why of how to approach that problem and get unstuck. Awesome. All right, so let's unpack that. You said algebra earlier. Is that the math subject that we're talking about or does it work with other courses as well? Yeah, so PhotoMath covers everything from arithmetic to calculus. We find that most of our students are in about the fifth to sixth grade level. It's when students start getting their own cell phone. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's also when the math starts getting really challenging and parents actually need that additional help to um, help explain that math. You you mentioned that you are a parent yourself with three kids. And we find that we have tons of parents um, on our platform that just you know, do you remember how to take a logarithmic function or what is a determinant of a matrices? And even if you do remember some of the math, it's often taught very differently today than it was, you know, even a decade or two decades ago. So it becomes that struggle of like, I know the answer, but how do I explain it so that my kid also understands Mm -hmm. the answer? 
And that's the irony is like we're supposed to help our kids with school, but they often understand these topics better than moms and dads, uh, you know, and math maybe equally were. And I, I'm generalizing, but I think uh, as I hinted at in my introduction, parents and kids often struggle with math more so than other subjects. So you also sort of answered my next question, which is what grades is this for? So you're saying about fifth, sixth grade is when you start seeing uh, adoption of photo math and then going into high school and even probably into college as well, no? Yeah. So we see students all the way up, like you said, beginning in fifth, sixth grade, and then all the way up into college. One of the things we find is that even at, you know, today in North America, about 75% of college students are not prepared for college level math. Hmm. So even when we hit into college, we still, we still see a lot of need and help for things like algebra, some basic arithmetic, really shoring up fundamental concepts. Um, and, uh, and then we get all the way up into that complicated, you know, calculus area where you're taking derivatives and integrals. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the interesting things that you mentioned that reminds me is that about, we found 70% of parents don't feel comfortable helping with their students today in math. So they really want to, and they want to be able to be that um, here on support for their child, but sometimes they too need a tool to help them yeah. um, remind them how to do, you know, certain calculations and, and to help um, explain things with their children. Speaking of explain things, can you walk us through how it works with your camera? Like maybe, you know, right from the start. So you download the app, uh, PhotoMath, and you've got it on your phone or tablet, perhaps. And then what's next? Sure. So once you've downloaded the app, you open it up and it takes you to the camera screen on your phone or tablet. You snap a photo. Then all our fun, crazy algorithms, machine learning kick into place. We understand and figure out what is the problem that you're actually trying to look at and what is it that you're trying to understand. And then we surface up um, step-by-step explanation on how to approach and ultimately solve that problem. And so that could include things like, um, how do I do this next step? Or why is it important? You know, why is it important for me to consolidate all the terms on the left side of the equation? Mm -hmm. Things like that. All right. And with that in mind, should parents and teachers be concerned that this app actually does the work for you or it does show you how it reached that solution? Yeah, that's a great question, Mark. I think it's really important today that we provide children and any learner with the tool sets to help them to understand and learn. The app does give the ultimate solution because we want students and parents to have that confidence that we know what it is that we're actually trying to solve and that we understood the problem correctly. But the real value does come in the understanding the how and the why did I take these steps and approaches. And we actually find that um, over 90% of our users look at these step-by-steps and that's really the valuable part. You know, today you can Google and pretty much get any answer or you can ask somebody for an answer, but we really want the students to understand how to get there so that they can eventually do it on their own, yeah. right? And to be able to see that maybe maybe you only need to see it once. Maybe you need to see it 10 times or even 50 times, right? And that's kind of the beauty of where the app comes in is that you can scan and see similar types of problems to an unlimited degree and we'll be able to help you each and every single time, right? So again, it doesn't matter if you need the help on it once or a hundred times, we'll still be able to help provide those step-by-step explanations to give you the how as much help as is needed. Awesome. When we return a few more minutes with Jennifer Lee from PhotoMath, the number one downloaded math app that leverages your smartphone's camera to help students and their parents solve math problems. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Follow Mark Saltzman on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Listen to Check It Out whenever you want. chatting with Jennifer Lee. She is the CGO or Chief Growth Officer at PhotoMath. This is a super popular app designed to help students with math, different kinds of math and in various grades. So with so many different math apps available at the App Store and the Google Play Store as well, you did mention that PhotoMath was number one and congrats again on, on the hundreds of millions of downloads literally. But there are others obviously. There's other math apps out there and some with a similar photo feature too. So what would you say makes PhotoMath unique in that regard? Yeah, thanks for that question. So I think that our founding story is actually kind of what resonates with us from a DNA perspective. The fact I mentioned before that our founder was a dad, he's actually an engineer by training, right? And um, very good at math. And when he was realizing that 
he, even as an engineer who's good at math, was struggling to help his son, it really kind of opened up his eyes and world. And I think it gives us a really strong perspective of understanding the user struggle and pain point. And then, so what does that mean? It means that we ultimately design and create the product, but I think with a really, truly deep understanding of the user's needs. And that's, I think, part of a lot of photo mass success. Like how, you know, how did we get to 250 million downloads and where we solve over 2 billion problems a month globally through the app? I think it's through that deep understanding. But even if we get down more technical, when we get to that kind of scale, what it means is that we can understand um, math learning in a whole different way. So we provide multiple explanations for certain problems and we can start to understand, well, maybe this solution or this explanation is really helpful in the US, but maybe not so helpful for a student in Russia or even down to the level of maybe this is a better way to teach it in Quebec versus Alberta, right? Sure. So we use our big data sets um, to be able to constantly improve how we explain math and how students learn math. So that's one way. And then the second thing that is kind of really unique and cool is that we I've been able to create some features that are completely unique to PhotoMath. And one of them that we're super excited about is called Animated Tutorials with Voice. And this is meant to mimic how a tutor or teacher would explain a problem on a whiteboard, right? It's a very visual, dynamic explanation that shows things like if you're doing long multiplication, how do you carry things from the ones place to the tens place? You know, if you're doing a matrices, how do, you, how do you actually multiply across the rows and diagonals to calculate your determinant? And it's a really cool means to solidify understanding through visual explanations. And this is the type of stuff because we're solely focused on really helping people understand math that um, are kind of cool features that are unique to PhotoMath. Awesome. Before we wrap up, Jennifer, what's PhotoMath Plus all about? Uh, so the app is free for people to download and you can scan as many problems as you like and you'll get the answers and uh, solutions and step-by-step -step explanations. But we also have a premium version of the app that you can subscribe to and that's PhotoMath Plus. And that includes a lot of extra um, supplemental information to understand how do I do the step in greater detail? Why is it important for me to do this? Um, it also provides hints and explanations at the key right time. So let's say you're tackling a calculus problem and it says, you know, the left Ryman sum. And you're like, what's the left Ryman sum? Well, we provide that kind of information immediately and right at the right point of content. And then certain other features um, like the image tutorials that I just mentioned are also included in the plus. I love that the core experience is free, but how much does PhotoMath Plus cost? Yeah, so PhotoMath costs $9.99 a month or $59.99 a year. So the equivalent of only six months. Mm -hmm. All right, Jennifer, and to get going, you just simply do a search for the word PhotoMath at the Apple App Store for iPhone and iPad or Google Play for Android devices. That's it? Yep, that's right. P-H-O-T-O-M-A-T-H -O -O -T -H on any of the app stores. Or if you're on web and you want to learn more, you can go to www.photomath.com. All right, photomath.com. Jennifer, thanks so much for your time. I really wish this was around when I was a kid. You've probably heard that many times. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for helping this next generation of math students uh, really grasp these often complicated topics. So thanks again for your time today and, and all the good work that you're doing at Photomath. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it, Mark. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed this week's Tech It Out. We first spoke with LG about its tone-free earbuds that have a unique twist, keeping those earbuds sanitized. Then sanitized disk told us how we can back up our photos and videos off our iPhone onto a USB drive, a little thumb drive that can actually fit inside of the iPhone. Speaking of storage, we learned about an app and website called Stuff Storage, that's stuff with one F, that pairs business owners with unused real estate with those looking to put their stuff somewhere in a secure place. And then PhotoMath, the popular math app that lets you scan a page of your math problems. It solves it for you and walks you through the problem. If you're on social media this weekend, drop by and say hi. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. It's Mark Saltzman. Mark with a C, S-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N. Let me know what you think of Tech It Out, if you've got any suggestions for upcoming shows or topics, any tech questions, or if you just want to say hi, it's all good. You can also send me an email from my website, marksaltzman.com. Thank you to Asus, the title sponsor on this program. And thank you one more time for tuning into the program. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your weekend, a healthy week ahead. And I look forward to catching up with you next weekend for another episode of Tech It Out. Ciao for now.